Like, just my day, or no, we're not done with the year though, right? August 23rd. Florida State University. Uh, I had a full-time job, and a uh, full load at school, and two internships. So I had one job that paid me, and two jobs that didn't, basically. Mm -hmm. No, sororities really weren't my thing because I like to be more free-spirited and make money. Pizza. I, was, I know that's a lame answer, but I mean, I could eat pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I'm pretty sure I did from the age of 20 to 29. So, I, Whole Foods, it's so good. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> they have the best pizza at Whole Foods. I love Destin. I guess I just love Destin. I mean, I have from when I was a kid. Now it's, you can't go four feet without getting into a wings uh, like souvenir shop. But back when I was a kid, I remember walking on the beaches of Destin. The sand is so bright white that you can't even open your eyes sometimes. It's so bright white. It is still gorgeous. There's just a lot more people down there, but I love Destin. I want to go to another country. I think, I think it would be cool to go to another country. I speak Spanish and English, but I think it would be cool to go to another country where I don't speak their language at all and just see what shakes loose, like somewhere in Asia, you know? I mean, I feel like I could communicate because I'm so, I can make it happen, you know? Um, but I just think that I always find when I go on trips and I come back, I know a little bit more about myself. Factual? <laughs> fun fact about myself or fun lie I tell myself? Let's see. Well, I, I guess it is fun for people, other people to know that I'm the only person in my family who's not a professional musician, and my name is Harmony. So I think maybe they have planned for me to be a musician. Um, my mom and my uh, stepdad and my brother still perform in their band called Eclipse. My uh, brother's in two bands. My stepdad is in two bands. My mom's in three bands. And they just perform every single weekend, still performing today. When I go home, and I watch them perform. I'm sitting in the audience, and at some point they'll introduce me like this. We have our daughter in the audience tonight. She's a college student. Um, she does the weather. <laughs> Let's give it up for her. <laughs> like I'm a loser. Um, I can sing, I can. And I guess that'd be another fun fact, because I don't sing in public unless my mom makes me. <laughs> using that line but I really don't I mean unless it's karaoke or something having fun but I basically fought being a professional musician because I just did not want to do what my mom did or told me to do um, but now I'm getting a little bit older I, I'm feeling like I may want to pull that out of the vault here I'm saving it for the next decade <laughs> Not anybody recently, because I like to think of myself as a local celebrity. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, when I was a kid, people would say I look like Alicia Silverstone, but that was back in the day. A lot of people tell me I look like some girl on the Nickelodeon, too. I don't know her name, though. I would pay to get eight hours of um, uninterrupted sleep. <laughs> so, like, nobody would ask me to cook anything or fold laundry or take out the trash or come to work, you know. I would just want eight hours of like totally interrupt to sleep and then wake up and like all my house be clean. That would be nice. It's the little things in life I find. I mean, you can't, you know, when you have all this money, you can't really do much unless you can sit down and, you know, kind of sit back and, and look at your life. And I just, I would like a little bit of rest, a little, a little R&R. &R. <laughs> I love playing soccer. 
I, I've always loved playing soccer. I wasn't very good at soccer when I played it um, in high school. And when I got into um, doing the weather, there was an adult soccer league. Uh, Mellow Mushroom has an adult soccer league and I played for their team when I was doing the weather in Columbus, Georgia. And it was a, a co-ed uh, adult soccer league, right? So I'm like, this sounds great. Let's do this. And so I show up, you know, I got my Mellow Mushroom t-shirt and uh, it was such a blast uh, playing soccer and trying not to get hit in the face with the ball and then go to work to do the weather the next morning. That was hilarious. And I love to watch soccer too. I don't know if you've ever been to a professional soccer game before, but it is hilarious. Not in a bad way. It's just so funny because everybody's so vibrant and just, I mean, it's off the charts. Make sure you go and, uh, and see a professional soccer match. But I mean, everybody loves football in the South and technically soccer would be football. I mean, I like the holidays and all, they're nice. But, hmm, because we always work on the holidays. And I always have, I always waited tables. So when you wait tables, you gotta serve people on the holidays. Um, hmm, I mean, I love Christmas. That, because, you know, Christmas is one of those times of year where even if you're just miserable as all get out, you'll find a smile from somebody on that day. It could be from, you know, just a small little crack of a smile from the lady who's giving you, you know, your last minute gift ideas at uh, Walgreens or wherever, but um, I love Christmas and it just, the thought of Christmas makes me happy and my son lately has been telling me Merry Christmas and it's October, so I think that's going to be his favorite holiday. <laughs> I'm not afraid of much, there's got to be something though. Let me dig in the treasure trove and see what I'm afraid of. Mm, I don't like green beans. <laughs> I'm afraid of somebody forcing me to eat green beans. My mom could vouch for that. I just don't like them. I got a problem with them. They freak me out. I mean, seriously, I'm not really afraid of insects or any kind of animals. I'm not afraid of heights. Um, not afraid of closed spaces. Don't like green beans. They freak me out. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't like the way they taste. Bad memories, I guess. That's a toughie. My favorite movie back in the day for a while was Pulp Fiction. Um, it was, I'm, I like artistic movies, anything that um, plays into um, the artistic flair. But lately I have a new favorite movie, which is kind of cool. It's called, it's named Joy. Have you ever seen that movie? That's pretty cool because it's like based on a true story and I have that mop. And I love that mop. So, Joy. <laughs> well, I teach Zumba. So that's a lot of fun. It's kind of like a hobby. I mean shaking it as a hobby, never hurt anybody. Um, when I moved to Birmingham, I was getting my master's degree uh, from Mississippi State, and I was uh, studying, and so a friend of mine encouraged me to get certified to teach Zumba, and so I got certified and started teaching it, and then I was teaching for about two months, and then Stephanie uh, got pregnant with her first kid, Fisher, and uh, so they called me in to fill in for her, and I've been doing this ever since, but I still intermittent kind of teach a little Zumba here and there. But it is funny nowadays to sub for a friend and teach a Zumba class and then halfway through they realize who I am. <laughs> and then they start staring at me all weird like and I'm like, can we just shake it for a second? <sighs> it gets weird after that, but they still have a good time. Well, I I'm proud that I finished college. I mean, I know that might sound silly, but I'm a first generation college student in my family. And the fact that I even went to college and then actually finished college and did what I said I was gonna do in high school, um, that's pretty amazing. I mean, even when I run into people um, now getting close to uh, 20 years out of high school, uh, they say, I can't believe you actually are doing the weather. That's crazy, I never thought that would happen. But I just, um, eyes in the prize and never gave up. I grew up in Florida. Um, with the family band and so most of my upbringing was raised uh, I guess in the 80s it probably wasn't inappropriate to be like on the end of the bar eating maraschino cherries and Chex Mix but in the 80s it was totally cool and so my parents um, were always musicians they played at uh, flea markets and uh, Elks uh, lodges and uh, moose lodges and uh, all kinds of events so when you I always ask my mom, well, what did you do with us when you had gigs? And she said, well, we got creative. I didn't understand that until I became a mom. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with my kid? 
I get creative. Uh, but we just, I just remember being with my parents, um, always being around them, and, and I think that did definitely did aid to what I do now because it's show business. I mean, that's ultimately what, what they're in. It's show business, it's showmanship, it's uh, showing up, even when you're tired, even when you're hungry, even when you're sleepy, even when you look like your face has been dragged across the concrete, you still paint that joker up, put on a brave face, and when it's showtime, you know, you go. And I learned that from my mother and, uh, and saw her perseverance and, and saw her fight in, an, in a male-dominated uh, career field at, at that time, um, which mine is, or was rather, I think we even the playing field here. Two against two, me and Steph, Adrian and Jerry. Um, but growing up around that um, atmosphere, it, it definitely helped me become who I am today because I wouldn't be able to just go up to anybody and talk to anybody or have a conversation about different things. Um, but since I know a lot about music, that basically ties me into anybody from the 50s to now. When I was in high school, um, one of the clubs for career day took us to a television station um, because I did the morning news, you know, just like regular chess club meeting, canceled. Cheerleading practice at two. So it's really complicated stuff. Uh, but she saw that I had a personality I wanted to do something, so they took us to the television station and um, I got to talk to the meteorologist there and I wasn't very smart um, in high school. I didn't. Well, I wasn't very, I mean I, I mean, I did like basic, you know, but I wasn't like a mathematician. I mean, now I consider myself to be a mathematician. I actually tutor kids in math now. But when I was in high school, I just didn't, I didn't really care much about uh, math. But I did like the weather and what this guy was doing. And I said, well, how am I supposed to do that? And he said, well, you know, you just got to study hard and uh, go in with the right attitude and, you know, you'll be able to do it. And I said, Way. And uh, you know he didn't get into the math aspect of it. And when I went into college, they told me, you know, you're right here, and you need to be right here. I was like, there's, I just don't see how that's gonna happen. And uh, for some reason, it did. And I made it through. And the math and the science all, all came, and, and the hard work. And um, you know, I, I just followed the path. But the the reason why I even had an interest in weather, though, is because my ultimate idol of all time and I still like him a lot, is David Letterman. I used to watch the David Letterman show when I was a kid every night. I was religious about it. I mean, he was like the world to me. And he used to be a weatherman. And uh, he would give out random things on the corner to get people to watch his, news, uh, his weather cast all the time. And he was just so funny and, and lighthearted. And I was like, how did he become a talk show host? And he was a weatherman first. And so I really wanted to be a talk show host. And that's what I wanted when I was younger. And then once I got into meteorology and I did all the work, I realized that this is just where I'm supposed to be. But we'll see what happens down the road. <laughs> I like tracking severe weather. I don't like to see people hurt and, and to see people struggle and to see anybody suffer. Um, but I like being able to help people and it's it's the only time that all of us get to actually take all the knowledge that we've learned and all the skills that we've uh, attained over the years, you know, all the experiences. It's the only time that we have actually to showcase all of that and use that for the greater good to actually warn the public and let them know danger's coming. And it, it's just very rewarding to me to know that I've actually helped people in the community that I love so much. Uh, I'd say the least favorite part of my job is, is having to see people in pain. And uh, I think it's important to report that information to people and let people know what's happening, but it, it breaks my heart. There's been several times, and my coworkers can vouch for this, is when I get to stories, I end up crying. <laughs> if it's a sad situation, or if somebody has lost a child, or if their home is completely destroyed, I can't let anybody cry alone, and I won't. And it's, it, it, and I know that sometimes it may come off as unprofessional, but I have a heart, you know, and I think it's probably grown a lot bigger now that I have a kid. Um, but during the April 27th tornadoes, um, after, you know, we, our team tracked the tornadoes for 28 hours straight, no sleep, um, didn't go to the bathroom. The days after, we had to report on all the damage and destruction, and I wouldn't even show up to anybody's house without bringing them something. Food, water, 
money, whatever it was, because you don't show up to someone's house at 20 years of their life scattered all over the floor and ask them personal questions if you're not gonna try to help their lives get better. And uh, so I think that's probably the worst of it is just seeing other people's pain and be, for me because I can feel it.